In this video I'll be taking a look at the Raspberry Pi 5 NVMe base from Pit Moroni. This is one of a few boards that have cropped up that allow you to use an NVMe drive with your Raspberry Pi 5. I'll be taking a look at the base, seeing how it fits to a Raspberry Pi and doing some basic testing with an NVMe drive installed. The first thing you'll notice is the really nice design that they've got on the packaging. Pimeroni do always have great packaging for their products, which always gives a good first impression. If you haven't used them before, Pimeroni sell a wide range of maker products, including boards that they make themselves. This is not a sponsored video, but they're a great company to deal with, so be sure to check them out. So with that said, let's get this bag open and take a look at the board. So there's a few separate parts inside the bag, so let's be careful here, make sure we don't lose any of these smaller pieces. So of course, first of all, we've got the base itself. It's a really nice looking board. Not a huge amount going on there, but it doesn't really need it. We've got the PCI Express slot on the left. The base has multiple mounting points, which allows for different size SSDs to be used. There's also an unpopulated footprint up here, and it looks like it's something power related, but I'm not entirely sure what this could be used for. On the back of the board, we've got a nice silkscreen design with additional labels for each of the SSD mounting points. Otherwise, this side of the board is totally empty. We've also got a bag full of screws and standoffs, which will contain everything we need to get this set up and attached to a Pi. We have four rubber feet which can be used if you want to sit the pie on a flat surface and these would be attached to the bottom of the NVMe base. And last but not least, we have this nice little cable which we'll plug in later on to make the connection between the base and the pie. The ends are labelled so it should be easy to get this the right way around and install it correctly. And this is where I'm going to start the assembly. Lifting up the flap of the connector, it should be really easy to slot the cable in place. Just make sure it's the right way around. The printing on the cable should be facing downward. Once the cable is fully inserted, close the tab to lock it in place. With the cable fitted, I'm now going to go ahead and install the SSD. Here's the drive that I'm going to be using with the Raspberry Pi. While the connector on this drive is the same as you'll find on SATA M.2 drives, the label does confirm that this drive is NVMe. It's 128GB, which is more than enough for my usage, and it comes in the 2242 form factor, so it is a bit shorter than the full-length NVMe drive. When choosing an SSD to use with the Pi, bear in mind that it's only certified for PCI Express Gen 2, though it is possible to enable Gen 3 support by tweaking the Pi config. Before installing the SSD, I wanted to point out that it is possible to flash an OS directly onto it, though this requires an up-to-date Pi that's configured for NVMe booting. I won't be doing that now, as I'll be installing the OS directly from the Pi, but it's something to bear in mind if you want to install another OS at a later date. There are three different lengths of screw that come with this kit. To mount the SSD, you want to use the medium length screw, so the middle one out of the three. Slot this through the relevant hole on the underside of the NVMe base, and then you'll want to use a nut to hold that screw in place. Once that's done, the SSD can be installed with another nut used to secure the SSD against the screw that we've just fitted.
The next thing I'm going to fit now are the mounting posts which will hold the Raspberry Pi above the base. For this you'll want to use the shortest screws and fit them to the mounting holes around the outside of the base. Before I go any further, I just wanted to point out that the next steps that I do here are in a different order to the official Pimeroni installation video. While I chose to mount the Pi next and install the cable afterwards, the Pimeroni video guide plugs the cable into the Pi and then folds the Pi on top of the base. I don't see any issues with the way that I install the drive, but I wanted to point this out in case you wanted to follow Pimeroni's install guide. Next I'm going to put the Raspberry Pi 5 on top of this and I'm just going to screw this in place again using the short screws that are available. To ensure everything lines up correctly I'm just going to partially tighten these screws for now and once they're all fitted I can then tighten it up fully. The screws are fitted and tightened fully. So the last thing for me to do now is to plug in this cable. Before trying to plug the cable in, you need to make sure that the clip on the connector is raised and that will allow the cable to slot into place. And then once it's in, you simply push down on the clip and that will hold the cable tightly in place so that it doesn't come out. I don't want to create any bends or folds while doing this, so I'm going to be quite careful and try and bend it over as smoothly as I can just to make sure that the cable doesn't become damaged. So we can see that's clipped down, that's nice and secure, and the cable doesn't stick out too much from the Pi, but it has also got a nice curve, it's not pulled tightly, and there are no creases in the cable. One thing to note is that the cable does slightly block the microSD card slot, so take extra care when inserting or removing a microSD card. That's the hardware done, so now let's take a look at the software side. This is a fresh copy of Raspberry Pi OS, which is flashed onto a micro SD card. The first thing to do is to make sure that the Pi's bootloader is up to date. To do this, I'm going to open a terminal and type raspi config separated with a hyphen. This will start the Raspberry Pi software configuration tool. Under advanced options, select bootloader version and select the option to use the latest version of the boot ROM software. Once this is done, reboot the Pi to make sure that the update is successful. Once rebooted, reopen the Raspi config tool and set the Pi to default to the NVMe drive. Again under advanced options, this time we'll go to the boot order setting and select the NVMe slash USB boot option. This isn't strictly necessary, Later on, when we remove the micro SD card, it will automatically boot to an NVMe drive anyway. But this will make it easier to test that the NVMe drive is bootable without having to unplug the micro SD card. That's everything done on the config side, so I'll now close Raspi config and move on to installing an OS on the drive. To do this, I'm going to be using the Raspberry Pi imaging tool. Though you don't need to use this, you can use any method that you'd normally use to flash an OS onto a drive. First is to select the device, so obviously that's a Raspberry Pi 5. Then to select the operating system, we'll go with the 64-bit version of Raspberry Pi OS. And then we have to select the drive that we want to install it to. And as we can see here, the 128GB SSD is the drive that's showing. So now we can click next and now we've got a little dialogue which allows us to customise some settings but I'm just going to skip this and set the Pi up once it's booted. Now we have to accept to wipe the drive and it's also now asking for our password just to make sure that we have permission to actually do that. So now all there is to do is wait for the image to be downloaded and installed by the imaging tool and then we should be able to boot directly from the SSD. So we've skipped ahead a few minutes now, it took about 3 or 4 minutes to install. 
and now we're ready to reboot the system. I'm actually going to shut down the Pi, that's just so that I can remove the micro SD card while it's powered off, so we can be sure that it's definitely booting from the SSD. So now that's removed, I'll power it back on and hopefully we'll get a successful boot. We've now booted into the initial setup for Raspberry Pi OS, so that shows that the OS was installed correctly. I'll go through and complete this setup, and then I'll run a couple of basic benchmarks on the drive to see what kind of performance we're getting. I'll be using a tool called HD Palm to do the test on the drive. This does need to be installed in Raspberry Pi OS as it's not included out of the box, but I've already gone ahead and done that. So here we have the results from a stock configuration of running HD Palm. This is using the default Raspberry Pi config and I will compare this later on to enabling PCI Express Gen 3 to see if that makes any difference to the speed. The timing cache reads will be expected to be roughly the same kind of result in both tests so it's been included as a bit of a control value as this is reading cache data and not pulling data directly from the drive. The buffered disk reads is the one we're more interested in, and this gave a result of 433 megabytes per second. Next, I'll enable Gen3 PCI Express by adding a line to the Pi's config.txt. I'll leave the added line on screen for a few seconds, just in case you're looking to type this in yourself. With this setting changed, I'll now reboot the Pi and I'm going to repeat this HD Palm test and see what result we get. So here are the results of the repeated test with PCI Express Gen 3 enabled. And we can see, as expected, the timing cache reads pretty much the same as what they were before. But the buffered disk reads, this is actually pulling data from the drive, so this is the real test of the drive's performance, is now coming in at over 800 megabytes a second, or almost double the previous result. It's worth remembering that Raspberry Pi 5 isn't certified for Gen 3 PCI Express performance, but on the basis of what I've seen here, if you really want to squeeze maximum performance out of your drive, it's certainly worth enabling this option. So that's it for the performance test, and I think we can safely conclude that using an NVMe drive with this base delivers much greater performance than using a micro SD card. So that was a look at the Pimeroni NVMe base for the Raspberry Pi 5. It's a fairly cheap board, it was easy to put together, and most importantly, performance of an NVMe drive is far greater than that of a micro SD card. Certainly, if you have tasks that have a lot of read and writes from a drive, you'll definitely benefit from the increased performance. I hope you like this video. Thank you very much for watching, and be sure to stick around for the next one.